Harry Leslie Smith. Um, hopefully some of you have seen what we've been putting out on Twitter. Um, Harry tweets as at Harry's Last Stand, and that's also the name of the book that he's just written. And I, and I know some people here today have read it. I think some people have read some of the articles he's written in The Guardian, in this country in particular. Um, and a lot of us have been extremely impressed. Ar Harry describes himself as an activist, which I think... Um, am I allowed to, to say your age, Harry? Is it... Is it at 91, I think we'd all hope to be as, as active as, as Harry cert certainly is. Um, he, he was a survivor of the Great Depression. He was fought in the RAF in World War II. And now he's using his experiences to say, you know, I lived through austerity in the 30s. I've seen the destruction. I've seen the waste. I've seen that it's failed. And I can't believe... People are allowing the government to go ahead with it again. And I, I believe that that's basically what we're going to hear from him today, but I'll let him speak for himself. Harry Leslie Smith. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I, I may write, but I wish I was uh, as erudite as uh, the former speaker. He's got the gift of the gab, which I, I'd love to have. However, I'd like to thank the Sussex LRC for inviting me to be on this panel and speak about my personal experiences when it comes to war, peace and internationalism. I began this long journey to 2014 in 1923. I was born rough and ready in the coal mining town of Barnsley. I came into this world just five years after the guns went silent in the great calamity called the Great War. My father's generation was battle-hardened by the unspeakable brutality of world war that had been fought not for democracy, freedom, human rights, or any other noble idea, but for the base ideology of trade and imperial ambition. None of the belligerents in that brutal four-year struggle were blameless. Britain, Germany, Russia and France all had an equal share in its start and continuation. <laughs> when I was a child growing up in the Mead Depression area of streets of Bradford, I lived cheek by jowl with war, World War I vets who through injury, shell shock or fate had ended up on the rough side of our town. They were men broken and abused by a system that easily used their bodies and lives as cannon fodder. But once they were of no use to king and country, were ignored and shunned. Almost 80 years on, I can still remember their faces haunted by an inhuman war and also a brutal peace that was not fit for heroes or ordinary men. Still, the grim experience of those veterans did not deter me from joining the RAF in 1941, when our country was at war with Nazi Germany. I could see that there was a clear distinction between the war of empires and the 1939 war which pitted our democracy against totalitarianism. There was also something different that occurred during the Second World War. Every one of us believed that when it ended, we would finally get the society we deserved, one that provided a social safety network to protect all of us when we were most vulnerable. World War II was both a terrible and exhilarating time to be alive and young. However, I learned more about human nature as a 
had a conclusion but I was stationed as part of the occupational forces in North Hamburg, Germany. <coughs> when I came upon that city on May 1st, hours after Hitler had, been, had killed himself in Berlin, I saw a city devastated beyond recognition. Think 9-11 had multiplied it by 10 million. The whole city center, its dockyards, the working class neighborhoods had been bombed into rubble. Both the smell of death and spring greeted me as my squadron drove in our lorries across the devastated city to our billets at the airfield. As time went by and going and spring turned to autumn, the German citizens began to starve and grow sick from illness caused by malnutrition, lack, proper sanitation and other preventable diseases. At night, rabid dogs roamed their derelict streets, our German civilians, their houses destroyed by aerial bombardment, huddled in bomb craters for protection from the elements. It was in this maelstrom of war and peace that I fell in love with a young German woman who would become my wife and partner for over 50 years. My love affair with Frieda wasn't meant to happen and in fact, it was forbidden by the British Armed Forces because once a Hun, always a Hun was their mentality. <coughs> me. Still, love persevered and during a time of famine and destruction, I wooed a wonderful woman and became enamored with the positive aspects of German culture. 1945 was a different time than now. It wasn't for innocent or kind, but after so much ugliness and butchery, we were more idealistic than today, then, today because we thought we could end war by ending poverty and building better societies. We created the United Nations, properly funded the International Red Cross to deal with refugee crisis that was beyond imagination. And here at home we built a welfare state and directed the National Health Service. I am not a political scientist. I can only judge our present wars under the cold light of my experiences during the Second World War and my having lived during the Cold War. It pains me, but what we are experiencing today is a return to the time of my parents, when war was fought in endless succession for the purposes of maintaining industrial empires and strengthening the bottom line of rich men everywhere. I hope this afternoon gives us all a better understanding about how we can combat the scourge of these present wars and their threat to both the welfare state and all instruments that keep our democracy healthy. Thank you. afternoon and as you heard he's not actually feeling too well today so he has apologised but he's not actually going to take any questions but hope you appreciated that was an extremely moving speech and those of you who haven't read his book we do highly recommend it and it's I've, I've read it and it's absolutely fantastic um, I don't know um, if anybody's brought copies um, with them today I'm sure on his way out Harry wouldn't mind signing if you've got a copy with you. Um, I don't know 
we were expecting um, some copies to be bought for sale, but I'm not sure if actually they did arrive or not. I don't think they did. But that it is on sale, it's definitely on sale at, at all the bookshops in town, and we would really highly recommend it. It's a great book, it's a really good read, it's a very easy read, and it's really striking about, you know, we're living through again a policy that was tried in the 30s and completely failed. Um, we're paying for, we're, you know, we're paying for wars that are being fought abroad in our name that we don't believe in, and people are suffering at home because money's being spent killing people abroad. Um, it's as simple as that. Anyway, I'm not going to go on. I'm just going to thank Harry for coming. It was great to hear you, Harry. It was great to meet you. And thank you very much. I would just like to say, I would like to say how I admire all you people. You had the right idea. Just build on it because only I, I feel only the British people can change Britain. Yeah, yeah. And there's enough of you who think the right way. Mm. I was just gonna say it's very generous of you, Harry, but I think we offer you great respect. <laughs>